This morning's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 6, 6 to 19. And this is the, uh, the end of Jesus' final sermon. And he concludes the, the sermon with a prayer for his disciples. And uh, Valerie and I will read this together. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, gave to me, and I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you had given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Hearing this the good news, thanks be to God. If you were to offer a last bit of advice to your students or children or grandchildren before you die, what would you like to say to them? When we had a funeral service for Reverend Ken Hallett, his son, Reuben, told us what the good Reverend had told him. Reverend Hallett said, help others, and enjoy helping others. I like the second part of that advice, to enjoy helping others. It is as good advice as any that I have ever heard. It is simple and yet so profound that would make a huge impact on our lives as well as others. As for Jesus, according to John, he had a lot to say. In John's gospel, there is a final sermon that Jesus gives to his disciples filled with encouragement, heavenly teachings, and it concludes with a prayer. What is interesting and particular to John's gospel that is unique among all the other gospel is that the author of John's gospel focuses on the secret mystical teaching of Jesus. Today's scripture reading goes to the soul of Jesus as he offers these words of prayer. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. There are lots of names for God. I have read that there are over 800 names for God all over the world. In the Bible, some of the names are Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai, Elohim, Lord God. Then there's the name that God revealed to Moses on Mount Sinai when God appeared to Moses through the burning brush. 
Moses wanted to know the name of God, and surprisingly, God replied. This is the only time in the whole Bible or anywhere, anywhere else that I know where we learn of God's name from the mouth of God. God says to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. I am is the name of God. In John's gospel, Jesus says, I a lot. I, I, I. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus says, you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am. For the Hebrew people, what Jesus was saying was scandalous. For a Hebrew, there is only one good shepherd, one true vine, one bread of life, and that is Almighty God. Jesus is not claiming to be God to be God as such, but he is proclaiming an intimacy of God as he says, all mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. When we look at Jesus, we see God. When we listen to Jesus, we hear God. When we eat Christ's bread, we eat the soul-nourishing bread of God. Then Jesus prays, may they be one as we are one. This passage has been interpreted as Jesus praying for church unity or as theological unity. If that were the case, then Jesus' prayer would have been an utter failure as there are so many different denominations and so many different theological understandings. So many people lost their lives in wars between Catholics and Protestants. What Jesus is praying for is spiritual unity, not among the disciples, but between the disciples and God, just as there is the oneness between Jesus and God. Jesus is also praying for us so that we can also experience the mystical union between us and God as Jesus himself has experienced. It is the unity of Jesus, of the vine and the branches. It is understanding God not as a separate being who lives up in heaven, but rather as the essence of life within all of us and in all created beings here on earth and throughout the universe. I was lucky that I was ordained at a time when ministers were sent to rural part of Canada to start our ministry. The process was called settlement and it has since been abolished, perhaps within the last 10 years. I say I was lucky, even though I went all the way to Cold Lake, Alberta and Pearson, Saskatchewan, a two point charge, even though it felt so lonely and so isolated. I say I was lucky because I fell into depression and I wanted to quit ministry far too many times. I felt lucky because I experienced the dark night of the soul in a place where the nights were so very long and so bitterly cold. Mind you, it was so horrible that I would not want to wish it on anyone else. Yet, it was in that place of spiritual loneliness that I crave for God's presence more than anything else in the world. It was in that state of desperate struggle that my mind and heart finally broke open to see the meaning of God's name as I am. I saw a symbol of that in trees that grew in the cracks in the rocky face of mountains in Jasper National Park. I did not just see a tree, but I saw the indomitable spirit of life in the tree. And I remembered the God who said on Mount Sinai, I am. I realized also that this God was the energy of life, which kept my heart beating, my breath breathing, my cells regenerating, my ideas flowing, and fuel my desire to live and to love. 
this realization saved me from quitting ministry and saved me from despair by filling me with an incredible affirmation of life. Jesus has taught that name of God, I am, to his disciples. Ultimately, John's gospel proclaims, God is a life we enter, a love we share, and the ground in which we are rooted. This changes the way we must think about Christianity. The good news of the gospel is not that we are not a wretched, miserable, fallen sinner in need of saving grace from eternal fire. Nowhere does it say the dreadful, guilt-producing, and guilt-filled mantra, Jesus died for my sins. We are not fallen. We are simply incomplete. We do not need to be rescued, but we are invited to experience the power of God's overflowing love. Our task is to reimagine what it means to be a human being. Rather than focusing on human survival and self-concerns, we are to embrace the overflowing life of God that, that is present in us on earth and throughout the cosmos. What Jesus is trying to tell us is that true life is discovered when one is free to give life away, that love is known in the act of love, and that we are agents of God's eternal spirit. That is how Jesus lived as he gave his life on the cross, and as he lived as a channel of God's infinite love and healing. The good news is that we too can participate in the life of Christ. He prayed for our sanctification, that we will be made holy, so that we too can also live into love, to go beyond our own survival mode, and to think beyond our own narrow selves. The life of faith is a long journey. It is kind of like learning to play the piano. We are practicing to get better and better, but we make lots of mistakes and that is okay. Once in a while, we may play as if the music is being played through us, through our hands and on the piano. Similarly, we can also become a vehicle of God's eternal spirit. Being a part of a church community, we are given the opportunity to serve and to help others. By being a part of the church, we can join others to work for causes that are greater than ourselves. Thus, faith transforms itself from a personal piety into works of justice and outreach. The beauty of this is that once in a while, when we are helping others, it feels as though God is working in us and God is working through us. It feels as though we are indeed God's agents of love and justice in our world. Reverend Ken Howlett understood this as he told his sons, help others and enjoy helping others. Thanks be to God.